go ahead and get started with the episode. So, for this first story, we're going to go way back in time to the magical era of the mid-1800s. Everyone's favorite era. And it's funny because the mid-1800s had this weird combination of, like, people still were super superstitious, but they also had civilization butting up against everything. Mechanization, technology, all of that stuff. It really was kind of the make or break point for humanity and belief systems. So we're going back to the mid-1800s. That's us walking into a time warp. And you go, Jason, what state are we in? And I go, I don't know. I didn't put that in my notes. <laughs> so we're somewhere in the United States. Most likely the East Coast. So anyway, <laughs> we're standing there in a field, apparently. A couple houses. A dude comes out and he's like, hey, guys, what are you doing here? And we're like, that's, that's, you sound quite like the modern man. And he's like, yeah, you know, whatever. My name's John Murray Spear. And we're like, oh, that's kind of cool. You're not a serial killer, are you? Because you're using your middle name. And he's like, what's a serial killer? Ah, uh, never mind. So, John Murray Spear was a minister turned spiritualist. Now, as a minister, he actually, you got to give him credit because he put his money where his mouth is, or was, because he's dead now. But he believed... He was anti-slavery, so that that's a good belief to have. But one day when he was preaching that at a church, his parishioners didn't agree with him, and they beat him down, to basically to the point of being an invalid for like two weeks. But it didn't deter him. He's like, I know what's right. I'm going to do what's right. And to be fair, we were not... <laughs> our time traveling mission was after the slavery beating. We weren't present for that. We would have done something to help him. But post-slavery beating, we're back in time. Now, in this time period, spiritualism was starting to take off. And that was kind of this weird, that was kind of this weird point in American history where talking to the dead became the big fad. It started off with these two sisters. I think they were the Fox sisters out on the East Coast. They said that they could communicate with the spirits by knocking. And it became, and it's funny, it was really the start of the boo pill. I've talked about that on past episodes. If you want to get a woman's attention, Tell her you're into ghosts and the supernatural because all women like that stuff. The girls said they could communicate th to the dead through this knocking thing. And it became like high society where they're like, if you're hosting a party, why don't you have like a ghost party? Like everyone was doing this stuff. It was super, super popular. And John Murray Spear was like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian minister and all that stuff. But this sounds like more up my alley. Like I really want to get on this ghost talking to train. So in 1853, that was DMX. Now, it's 1853, and John Murray Spear is completely on board with this spiritualism stuff. I would It would have been awesome to go back in time to go to like some old-timey fancy dinner party, and halfway through it, the hostess comes out, and she's like, hey, we're just going to knock on stuff for the next 20 minutes. We're going to turn all the... Did they have lights back then? We're going to snuff all the candles, and we're just going to knock on tables for a while. I can just imagine a bunch of rich people sitting around having nothing better to do than to have the candle snuffed out knocking on stuff. Uh, John Murray Spear aside for a second, if I was back in time and I was invited to one of these fancy dinner parties where rich people try talking to ghosts, I would most likely start mucking about. I don't, I've, I don't fake ghost stuff as a part of my rule, but again, you couldn't... Could you resist if you're hanging out with Mrs. Hoytentoit and she has her, you know, all of her forks are special. Like, here's your seashell fork. Here's your lettuce fork. That's a tomato fork. All that stuff. You would just be too tempted to start messing with stuff. If she's trying to talk to a ghost, she'd be knocking on the wall. I'd be lighting little fires. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a like pyromaniac. I'd basically be Dennis the Menace of the 1800s. It's specifically only spiritual events for the rich. I guess that's kind of a limited Dennis the Menace-esque genre, but... That's what I would do. I couldn't help myself. If I was hanging out with a bunch of street urchins and they're like, I want to know if me mom still loves me. Can we knock? Can we knock to see if my mom is still around? I'd be like, yeah, a little street urchin. I'd dust them off a bit. Yeah, let's see if we can legitimately contact your mom. But if I was at a fancy dinner party and they're like, we want to know who is the best dressed here, I would totally be like knocking for that hot chick. Plus, again, I'm just going to be hitting on chicks in the dark all the time. Because again, the boo pill... Every girl there is going to be totally turned on. I, okay. 
Despite my Dennis the Menace slash Predator-esque behavior at these dinner parties, I'm just trying to set the tone. So this is the, this is the era John Murray Spear lived in, minus me and my horrible, horrible instincts. But it was in vogue. Everyone was doing this stuff. And John Murray Spear jumps fully on board. But his intentions were far more grandiose than impressing people at a dinner party. No, he thought that he could actually talk to the greatest minds of the past. Which is a noble goal. Which is a noble goal. I'll give him that. So what happens is, he's like, I'm going to try to contact the smarty pants of the past. And he does. According to him, he does. And not only does he find the people in the past are more than willing to help us in the present, or his present, our future, wait, his future, our past, his future, wait, his present, our past. This is what I'm talking about. So, not only were they willing to help the people of his presence, present of our past, but whatever, these dudes are going to help. So he contacts this group, and they just, these ghosts, these ghosts show up, and they're like, worry. And they're all like blue outlines and stuff. I don't know. They didn't have color back then. Everything was in black and white. And Benjamin Franklin pops through this portal. And he's like, Whoop. and he goes, John Murray's spear. I am Benjamin Franklin. And of course, you'd be like, well, off, you're obviously Benjamin Franklin. You're holding a kite. And he's like, yes, this is my ghost kite. And I am the leader of a group called the Association of Electric Sizers. And you're like, whoa, okay, what's that? And he's like, we are the ghosts who who try to make electricity, not like shoot it out of our hands, like the Emperor from Return of the Jedi. And John Murray Spears is like, what's that? And he's like, don't worry. You'll know when you die and you live in the future too. He goes, we want to bring humanity to a higher level. We are here to give you ideas for technology. And John Murray Spears is like, that's great. So there's like an association. Who else is with you? And Benjamin Franklin goes, what about my friend Thomas Jefferson? Peers out of the portal. Whoa, Thomas Jefferson. I know you. You just died like 20 years ago because we're in the past. Thomas Jefferson's like, yep. And then Benjamin Franklin goes, also, we have John Quincy Adams. And John Murray Spear would be like, what does John Quincy Adams have to do with electricity? Uh, Just forget about it. Then we have Benjamin Rush. John Murray Spear's like, who the hell's that? (laughs) <laughs> you got Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, John Quincy Adams, and Benjamin Rush. I had to look up Benjamin Rush. He was the guy who signed the Declaration of Independence. There was a bunch of people who signed the Declaration of Independence. As far as I could tell, still nothing to do with electricity. And then the last guy to jump out of the portal was John Murray. The person John Murray Spear is named after. A little egotistical. And um, he was a minister. Again, nothing to do with electricity. We, John Murray Spear, and a little a little underwhelming as the list goes down the line. John Murray Spear is like, oh, hey, yeah, your name's John Murray. That that's coincidental. The electricizers also had other groups. One of the groups was so. Here's your choices: you can summon the ghosts of the dead, the greatest minds possible. You can get a badass group named the electricizers. You can get the elementizers. It's pretty cool. Teach me stuff about elements. Teach me stuff about, you know, like gold and maybe a little alchemy. You're like, okay, what else? So you summon up, you get the government heisers. It's kind of boring. They just show up and like lecture you. It's like civics class, but taught by ghosts. And at that class, I could see John Quincy Adams or like, Abraham Lincoln wasn't dead yet, so he wouldn't be a part of any of these groups, but you could get some people. But if like, let's say even the ghosts knew you were totally lame. They're like, oh man, I don't want to talk to this guy. Just send him to one of these two groups. These two groups are completely useless. They're a bunch of ghosts nobody hangs out with. You could summon up the healthfulizers. They just teach you about health. Pro tip, you shouldn't get tips about living healthy from dead people. Like, if you're already a ghost, you probably don't know about how to live a healthy life. Just just a little tip. And then the other one was the agriculturalizers. They just teach you how stuff grows. Like, I'm sure back then that was far more important. Because I'm not growing wheat, and back then everyone was growing wheat, so you may actually want to talk to a ghost of, like, Johnny Appleseed or something. I don't even think he was dead at this point, but you know what I mean? Like, it just, it's, I would be, I, I would be so upset if I finally was able to summon a cadre of the dead, and they're like, let us teach you about how nitrogen and soil, I'll be like, god damn it, dude. Anyways, so, 
Back to the electricizers, though, because those are the important ones. They tell John Murray Spear, listen, you're on a mission. We are here. We're going to teach humanity the power of technology. And more than that, you are going to build. No, you, John Murray Spear, are going to give birth to the new god that will usher mankind into utopia. So the electricizers gave him the plans, and I'm doing air quotes around that, for a device known as the new motive power. And the reason why I say plans and air quotes is because each session he would basically get the vision for a different piece and have to assemble it as he went along. It was super intuitive. He would basically go into these trances and talk to these people. Now, it should be fully noted right now that the fact that he was actually talking to Benjamin Franklin and this group, its he probably wasn't. He probably was either making it up or imagining it. It's possible he was talking to a ghost, but the thing is, is that the fact that one of the ghosts was the person he was named after is a little delusional. The fact that he was the one chosen to create this thing called the New Motive Power, it was also known as This is the list. This was the marketing list. The new mode of power, the physical savior, heaven's last gift to man, new creation, great spiritual revelation of the age, philosopher's stone, art of all arts, science of all sciences, the new messiah. I mean, most people talk to Charlie Charlie on a piece of paper and a pencil. This guy is believing that he's ushering in the last great age of man. And so it probably was either a scam or a delusion of grandeur. But he does go about trying to create the new mode of power. Now, he doesn't have a ton of money, but they can create a small version of the model. And at this point, he does get a, a, a smallish group of followers. And so they build this model. They raise $2,000. And the full-size adult model of the new mode of power is going to cost $20,000. But they figure, well, this is the baby size. You have to give birth to a baby, and then it grows to an adult. Like, this is basically the way that a human will, would develop. So he's putting it together piece by piece, and people have, there's been a few, no, there's no photographs of it, no, I don't believe there's any drawings of it from the time period, but it was basically like a giant mechanical device that sat on a desk, and it had like a pendulum in it, and they plugged it all in, there's no plugs, but I mean, they hook it all up, and then they had this woman called the New Mary, it was a full ritual. They brought in this woman called the New Mary. And to this point, nobody knows who that woman was. But so they get the device all set up. And they're like, this is what... You can see Benjamin Franklin in the background, like, giving him a thumbs up. And John Mary Spears like, thank you. Thank you. And the woman then, the New Mary, laid in front of it, legs spread open, and simulated childbirth for hours. Just like, oh, And there's just this machine sitting in front of her. And Benjamin Franklin's ghost is like, yeah, keep pushing, baby. Yeah, do it. Do it. And John Murray Spears looking over at him like, what's going on, Ben? Anyway, so after two hours, the woman gets up. And then she begins caressing it like you would a baby. And there was a slight movement in the machine. And John Murray Spear is like, that's it. It's been given life through this creation of both technology and this woman acting like a mom, it's been given life. And then, just when mankind was on the cusp, the precipice of having its true God, its true mechanical God, the art of all art, the science of all sciences, a mob rushed into the building and smashed it to bits. Well, that's what John Murray Spirit, the most likely explanation that historians say, is that it did move a little bit, and then some more time passed, a couple days, a couple weeks, and it was just a piece of metal and wood sitting on a desk. And John Murray Spear realized that it just didn't work, and that it was all just kind of a waste of time and money, and they locked it up in a closet or threw it into a swamp. That's the most likely. There's been no proof that a mob destroyed the machine. That was the story that was going around at the time. But there's actually no proof of that. The only thing we know is that it was built and then it went missing. And before you go into the conspiracy thing, like maybe it's missing because it got big and started walking around the city. No, John Murray Spear after that, just he never really mentioned it again and just ended up becoming an author. Yeah, that's the story of the new mode of power. Quite anticlimactic, I know. It would have been much more interesting if on the verge of life, the ignorant masses of America smashed it to bits. We smashed it good with our clubs. But that's not what happened. 
It just was a piece of junk that was put together poorly, and John Murray Spear was probably just daydreaming the whole thing, or he wasn't following the direction. I give him the benefit of the doubt. He wasn't following the directions correctly, and it didn't work. You know, it's really one of those things that if I was just hanging out, and I started getting messages from ghosts, Benjamin Franklin's ghost, Optimus Prime's ghost, whatever, and they started telling me to build something or to do something, I wouldn't do it. Because one, I'd think I was crazy. And then two, I'd think, well, you're a ghost, you do it. If you're so powerful that you can float around and appear in my living room and transcend space and time, you do it. I'm not going to do it. Because if I do it, I'm going to be a lunatic. I'm probably going to be locked up or I'll be in the history books. I'll have a Wikipedia page about some stupid machine I built. Or, or, I, or I guess it works and I change humanity forever. But you do it, man. You're the ghost. Go possess somebody. Go possess like a homeless person. That's a little cold. But I don't know why they're more prone to possession. Go possess somebody. Have them build it. I'm not building it. I got a podcast to record, dude. What if a ghost told me to record this podcast and then I forgot? Kind of weird. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.